Omar Sama joins us now from Washington, D.C. He's the former Afghan ambassador to Canada, France and Belgium. Good to have you with us. Uh, a very sad day um, for Afghanistan. It's supposed to be its Independence Day. There's been a string of bombings and killings. Uh, in your view, what, is, what does this say about the state of security in Afghanistan? Well, uh, it says quite a bit. It says that uh, the security situation is fragile that the enemies of Afghanistan are taking advantage of the situation, that the government policies and strategy, in my opinion, are not totally in line with realities that are happening in terms of the peace process, in terms of uh, Afghanistan's political roadmap, in terms of the fact that the region has certain expectations, that great powers have certain expectations, and above all, that the Afghan people have certain expectations, both in terms of security and safety, in terms of uh, making sure that uh, everybody focuses on a good peace deal. And so that uh, qualification of good versus bad peace deal is obviously something that has to be worked on. And, and part of that peace deal that the Taliban has been uh, in talks with, with the U.S., is negotiating over the withdrawal of U.S. troops. But if U.S. troops withdraw, does that not leave Afghanistan more vulnerable? Well, the question is not whether the US, uh, all U.S. troops will be leaving. That is a question that has not been resolved yet. Uh, there are indications after last week's meetings in Washington that uh, the U.S. may uh, want to leave uh, a certain counterterrorism force behind, some intelligence assets behind. President Trump, in a tweet in the past 24 hours, has indicated that uh, he thinks that uh, it's important to make sure that terrorism does not become an issue and that an intelligence uh, uh, residue in Afghanistan is going to be needed. So we are assuming, and there's a lot of assumption about things that are not real yet, so we need to wait and see what these details of a peace deal look like before we jump to conclusions. And meanwhile, the Afghan government has certain responsibilities, not only towards the Afghan people, but also in terms of making sure that the, the political roadmap has all the different stakeholders on board. Well, Ashraf Ghani has promised to eliminate all safe havens of Islamic State, of Daesh. He's appealed to Pakistan for help on that. I mean, is the international community doing enough to root out those safe havens, those refuges for Islamic State? First and foremost, we need to find out exactly what this ISKP or Khorasan province presence in Afghanistan in the border regions of Pakistan actually mean? Who are they? Where they come from? What are their roots? What are their motivation? Who's behind it? Those things have not been answered. So Mr. Ghani, first of all, has to do his homework. Uh, and then he obviously needs to realize and prioritize as to who's the number one enemy and, and go after them and make sure that the public is behind him and the international community is behind him. Uh, at the same time, there are uh, indications that some Taliban, if not all, uh, are amenable to further talks and wanting to uh, come up with some kind of peace deal with uh, the international community, as well as later on with other Afghans, which is the most important and crucial part. Uh, so all of these opportunities have to be taken into account, as well as the risks and threats that exist. We can't just play on risks alone and forget the opportunities or vice versa. Omar, thank you. Omar Samad there in Washington, D.C.